I think, uh, I mean, like I think as Jumar just said, I think a lot of the data in uh, the UK, I would argue, is strong enough that I think Bank of England needs to sound a, probably a little bit more dovish, uh, more hawkish, I'm sorry. Uh, but I do remember that there is very little priced in as far as sort of the forward guidance on Bank of England is. Our uh, UK team expects that they would probably go for a hike arguably somewhere around August. So maybe what we do get out of the meeting today is some sort of a forward guidance on leading the markets towards that kind. And not a lot of that is in the price. So I suspect that could be what maybe marginally surprises the market. Of course, as far as sterling is concerned, yes, maybe a little bit of a support from that. Can that really translate into a sustained or significant sterling rally? No, I, I, I'd, I'd agree. I think politics is right now a lot more mm. of a factor for sterling uh, than, than necessarily rate differentials or rate spreads are. Let's go uh, to the dollar index then because, of course, the Fed, the big story uh, from overnight. When we talk about forward guidance, yes, they offered us some forward guidance, but it didn't really clarify if the next rate hike is going to, if the next move is going to be a rate hike or a, a rate cut, essentially. I guess they kind of said there's not going to be any cuts in the short term. What are you anticipating when it comes to the Fed uh, longer term? We know of course, with the Fed pivot, that they said nothing for 2019. Yes, we've got inflation uh, weaker, but of course, we heard from Jerome Powell saying that weak inflation, we're not too bothered by it because it's kind of a temporary factor. Would you agree? Yeah, I think, I mean, look, I think there was a little bit of a risk of overread into the Fed yesterday. I think it was a little bit about market being mispriced. My read is the Fed wasn't telling us that they're going to be hiking rates. They were just telling us that the hurdle for them to cut rates is higher than what is in the price. Uh, on the curve at the moment. Um, and as far as that translation into the dollar is concerned, of course, it marginally supports the narrative near term for the dollar. I think to my mind, the story on the dollar is a lot here also about the lack of an antipole uh, to the dollar. So markets very comfortable with where the US is as an economy in terms of its growth inflation mix versus the rest of the world. The rest of the world, and particularly out in Europe, and particularly core Europe, and Japan and all are struggling a lot more with growth. A lot of the EM is struggling with its own political issues. Asia here, uh, everybody's waiting for a trade deal. The tech cycle is still weak. So there's not really a lot else in the world to be able to sort of move against, if you might, mm. as an, as an antipole against the dollar. I think medium term, so, so your story to our mind, the cycle uh, from the Fed has, is, is done. They're done with the tightening in the cycle. It's an overvalued currency. Don't think the policy outlook is going to be, in the medium term, more supportive for the dollar. So uh, the rest of the world owns a lot of US assets. So I think it's hard to be bullish medium term, but I think the short term narrative, certainly in favor of the dollar. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.